Child, did y'all watch episode two of Jennifer Williams, My True Scam Story? Child, it got worse and worse as the episode went on. He was not only scamming the guy that she was dealing with. He was not only scamming women. He was scamming men as well, child. The story got worse and worse. The man even scammed his dad. He got his dad out of $40,000. And he didn't even know the man. He met the man when he was grown. Found out the man got some case money, tricked him into investing into this property or something like that that never existed. This man was a flat out con artist from, from the beginning. Like he was a born true to the game scammer. Like anytime you are a bisexual, like you tricking everybody, your family, you getting on. He was meeting men on Jacked. Meeting men on the street. One of the guys that he met, which is funny because it's always the same type of people or the same type of person that gets jammed up in those types of scams. Like, this man ain't have no Kikis from up the block. Because Kiki from up the block, number one, Kiki would have went upside your head. Kiki would have put you in the hospital. Kiki would have shut you down, Okay. They know who to play with and who not to play with. A girl like Jennifer, I feel like her and all his other victims had a similar, like, meek, soft, calm, toned down, dialed back type of personality. And that is step one to falling victim to a person like him. And all of the girls refer to themselves as smart, but just because you're smart doesn't mean you're not dippy. Because that's step two to getting taken advantage of. If you're a little dippy, you better watch out because there's people out here that's way faster than you in the mental space and they will line you right up. One of the guys that he met, he met him at a bar and they were having a conversation about real estate. And this man randomly jumps into his conversation and starts talking to this guy. And immediately the guy is assuming that he's attracted to him or whatever. So, you know, they meet up and when they had met up, he goes to the ATM machine. He comes back with his ATM machine receipt, which if you ask me, I feel like he did that and he was showing off. But he didn't realize that that would end up costing him because what ended up happening was he left his back door cracked, snuck in his house, stole some type of paperwork and then did a wire transfer and stole over one hundred thousand dollars out of his account. Like he liquidated his account and took all his goddamn money. So it's just like your desire to show off got you jammed up. Your desire for love and thinking that this man wanted you made you vulnerable and open to everything that he was doing and saying, and he robbed you. And it's like, I be trying to find it in my heart to feel sorry for these types of situations, but I just can't because when you play the story back, when you hear the person's story, it's like, okay, you did something dumb and then that dumbness came back and bit you in your behind. Why you want me to feel bad for you? I just can't. People that are scammers and manipulators, they'll always have a story similar to yours. So if somebody ever comes to you and tells you that they're going through the exact same thing that you're going through, you can sympathize with them. But the moment that they ask you for the coin, block them. Turn your back on them immediately because they trying to find an end into your goddamn bank account. Like one of the guys that he had met on Jack, his father had just passed away. And this man told his little date or whatever that he met on Jack, oh, my dad is sick and whatever, whatever. Fast forward to, oh, my daddy died. Mind you, the man ain't me his dad till he was grown. So he was just flat out lying. The man ended up giving him 20 grand. And then he gave him this bogus check talking about some, oh, don't. Uh, cash the check for 10 days because, you know, because of the amount of money that it is, you know, they're going to have to verify the check, whatever, whatever. So in the midst of this, this man gives him another five grand 
gives him the five grand in cash. Next thing you know, he disappeared into thin air. He never seen the man again. Um, he preyed on you and played on your emotions and he tapped into your feelings with what you were experiencing with your father, not even knowing that this man ain't even know his dad. He played in your goddamn face and robbed you. Now, in the midst of all of this, he had a daughter and he wasn't in her life, obviously, which he was too busy scamming to bring a little person along with him. But he ends up meeting the daughter or whatever when she was older. And, you know, the conversation of, you know, why weren't you there? And, you know, maybe we could have, you know, start developing a relationship and blah, 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 whatever. Right. Soon as he leaves from the meeting with the daughter, he calls the mom and says, yeah, I know this little girl look like me or whatever, but I'm going to need a DNA test. And then when he found out that the girl was, you know, pursuing her singing career, then he wanted to be in her life because he wanted to manage her. And it's just like when something is not for you and it's not there for you, it is a reason for that. We got to stop digging and searching and, and, and trying to attach ourselves to something that obviously didn't want us. Like when you found out who he was, it was more than likely a plus that he stayed out of your life. But instead you're sitting there crying because society tells you, Hey, if this person is not around, you're missing this. And you should be trying to figure out why instead of focusing on what's in front of you. Like this young lady, if you're pursuing your music career, focus on that. Don't focus on a man that you don't even know. That don't even make sense. Like, and I get it. Like people have emotional attachments to certain things, but it's just like when you see that something is not attached to you, let it go. I don't know if there's any more episodes left and I do feel like it was a good show and if it's... If they bring it back with another, with a different story or a different guy, because Jennifer ended up going to court with this man, which he didn't show up to court. His lawyer came and they basically threw out the case and was like, you know, he'll just have to pay you restitution, which it wasn't the amount that her car was worth, which I'm sure if he took her car, I know he got her for way more stuff than what she mentioned, but it's just like, you're not even getting half of what this man took from you. That's why... You supposed to have your street niggas on deck just in case things like this happen to you. Because I'm sorry, going to the cops and going to court in situations like this, they are not going to help you. And then plus, they just look at you like you're wasting their freaking time when they could be doing something way more important and focusing on something that's way bigger than you being in a love triangle or circle or whatever with this man and he scammed you. They typically do not care about that. And they're trying to get that over with as quickly as possible. But again, this is where being dippy comes in because you think that the police are going to help you in a situation like this. Why would you think that? But did y'all watch the show? What did y'all think?